Well. Welcome, everyone, to Air Venture 2024 and our daily recap of the show for the day. We're calling this our Air Venture Touch and Go Information Alpha, uh, where we are going to recap our day and talk about what's coming up tomorrow. So, we all got in at different times, obviously. We didn't fly in, we all took motor vehicles to get here. Yeah, instead we of drove flying. the Fisk arrival again. <laughs> Hopefully, someday that will change, but that's okay. So, uh, my dad and I got in uh, yesterday afternoon. Jim did as well with Bill. our photographer, Bill. <laughs> we'll hear from him in a minute. He doesn't know that yet, though. It'll be fun. <laughs> um, no, uh, we drove in yesterday, the four and a half hours from the Minneapolis area. Pretty uneventful drive. It rained in the morning, but once we got here and kind of got the lay of the land, started getting situated again, um, got our credentials set up, and we're kind of just trying to figure out what we're going to do. It was really busy. Um, so <laughs> my dad and I got here, so we were worried that it was going to be Sloshkosh before Oshkosh, which wouldn't have been very fun. But in the ends up, the ground was nice and dry, and we got a nice spot, so that's all good. Of course, that's, you know, the most important thing in Oshkosh. Yeah, you got to have a good a, spot. got to have a good spot. So Jim cannot relate because Jim is in a hotel. I have a really good spot in my hotel. <laughs> um, it's it's nice and temperature controlled. It got a little chilly last night. It was about 60 degrees in there. Does it stay dry? Um, it was dry Okay, that's as far good. as I know. Um, <laughs> that was great. It has internet. It has a lot of electricity. Oh. It's my favorite part of Can't camping relate. is being in a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's glamping to the extreme. I was in the Air Force, so I mean, take that for what it's worth. Fair enough. So, Badger, what was your adventure looking like coming in this morning? Yeah, you talked about driving out here like last night and sleeping in your truck. Is that what you did? Um, no, I, I <laughs> contemplated, but I put my uh, roadworthiness decision making to the task. And I'm safe checklist. I'm safe checklist for driving. I'm safe checklist, yeah. <laughs> and I did not pass the, uh, the fatigue aspect of it, so... Uh, after two very long days of work and two very short nights of sleep, I decided to take a nap on my couch, wake up early in the morning, and drive on up today. And here you are. And you got camp set up and everything, too? Yeah. Um, how do I say this nicely? <laughs> Finding a campsite involved some ingenuity on my own part. And okay. basically opening a part of the campgrounds they hadn't planned on opening for a few days, I just... A few people and I just decided we're opening it now and <laughs> made it happen. So, But you're not in the middle of a road, right? I'm not in the middle of a road, okay. no. <laughs> as long as you're, like, in a spot that, like, looks like it could be approved for camping. I mean, I'm not the EAA police, so. Yeah. A, yeah a, we won't Kyle Lewis's problem from last year, so. Yeah. A, a few people might be close to the road, for sure, but I'm <laughs> I'm tucked away nicely in a cornfield, basically. Lovely. Oh, there you go. Dad, would you like to say anything about our uh, adventure in? It was an adventure. It was a series of missed exits and uh, yeah, unfamiliar, even though we've been here many, many times. So, uh, but we did arrive and and, uh, and so we're here safely and we got our camp set up and yeah, we're ready to get sunburned and see a lot of airplanes. That's the way we do it. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Maddie's dad. <laughs> So, Jim, you mentioned that you were going to do a fun thing that you did invite us to, but we couldn't go. Yeah, you bailed on me. Yeah, well, Probably I, the missed we exits. Were, it was the missed exits. Okay. okay. Welcome we to the were, club. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> While we were setting up our tent, Jim went because he didn't have a set up his tent and went and did no. something a little more fun. All right. Um, no, Bill and I went out to Fisk yesterday and just checked it out there. It's somewhere that I thought was really neat to check out last year. So I went out there again. I wasn't recording anything, just kind of to take it in. Uh, watching everyone come in. It was a little bit less busy than it was last year, but it was still entertaining to watch different aircraft come in. And I don't know if it's just because of the Rutan stuff going on this week, but there were so many canard designs that came through yesterday afternoon when we were sitting out there. But uh, it was fun to watch. We got some photos and kind of just hung out for a bit. I believe there may or may not be the like 50th anniversary of the Very Easy or something like that. Okay. I saw a lot of shirts. So that could be a thing. Not quite sure. But clearly, the Rutan fans are out in full force this year. They sure are. So unfortunately, my dad and I, uh, well, we didn't sleep in, but we did take the longest time to get into the grounds today. So while we were meandering our way to the front gate, Jim, could you tell us a little bit about the Cirrus press release? Checked out the Cirrus press conference this morning. Um, this year, they're celebrating a lot of milestones. So they talked about the delivery of both the 500th Vision Jet and the 10,000th uh, SR model of their aircraft. So, how, 
How is he whining? He's got ice cream. He's I know, right? literally it's crying while eating ice cream. <laughs> I, what is kids <laughs> defy all logic. Sometimes. Okay, so for the listeners who can't see what <laughs> what's happening here, it's the first time it's, history is being made here on the Flying Midwest <laughs> podcast. Number one, I'm talking in my best golf voice. It's really because great. I don't want the parents to hear, even though I really, <laughs> I don't want the parents to hear what I'm saying. But number two, I've never seen a kid cry while eating ice cream. Well, just, you heard it here first. Yeah. It's possible. Okay. Well, All right, now let's talk about Cirrus. So, okay. so a big theme of Cirrus this morning was celebrating milestones and just reimagining the company a bit. So they have a new logo that they pushed out earlier this year that they talked a bit about. Um, they also talk about milestones of delivering uh, Vision Jet number 500 and SR model 10,000. So wow. that is quite a bit of aircraft that they have delivered over time. Um, and in a lot of categories, they're still best-selling uh, for their models of aircraft. So we'll do a full workup of that press conference and talk about it a bit more later. But uh, that video will probably come out tomorrow. i got to do some editing of that. But we'll talk about that. But we also talk about some of the training um, aspects that Cirrus put into play last year uh, that we covered during that show. So more to come on that topic um, as I release that video. Very interested to see it because I didn't get to be there. Yeah, sorry about that. It's okay. It was my fault. <laughs> Me neither, Maddie. It's okay. So while I was doing some writing of scripts and, and show notes and things like that, you guys were up to visiting with people around the grounds and uh, looking for other guest opportunities. Yeah, it was kind of a little bit of a <laughs> salesmanship going door to door, booth to booth, exhibitor to exhibitor, and basically just especially trying to find Midwest-based companies to uh, interview and potentially get on the podcast. I think Oshkosh is kind of our excuse to branch out and talk to kind of whomever we want. But definitely for the future, we like to keep it kind of Midwest-based. So uh, I was able to contact a couple companies that we're excited to talk to, hopefully tomorrow. So those interviews will be out soon, hopefully. Yeah, no spoilers on those just yet. Oh, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll get them set up first. It's a secret. Secrets. Secrets are fun hmm? when they're aviation-related. Well, the big event for us today was the Flying Midwest podcast meet and greet, and we had the joy of meeting some of our listeners who were kind enough to come out and meet us face-to-face -face and see the faces behind the mic. I do think it's fun when um, people come up to us and don't necessarily recognize us by face um, and like, hey, are you so-and-so? Um, just because we're wearing the shirts, but... Um, we got to interact with a lot of great people this afternoon, and mm -hmm. um, it is always awesome to hear feedback from people um, who enjoy the podcast. So thank you to everyone who did show up. Um, it was really great connecting with everybody, handing out some stickers, all that jazz. And thank you to my friends who found out how to find me during Oshkosh. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Do you need a restraining order? It sounds like they may have stalked <laughs> you there. <laughs> No, I told her I was going to be busy and that I'd see her, and I was very vague, and she found me. So it, I, she solved or she solved our problem. Is Thank it because Sarah. we posted our whereabouts on <laughs> <Yes>. social media? <laughs> well, she this, said I could find it. said I could find you here, and I said that was correct. Well, this story sounds suspiciously familiar. That's kind of how I got my start with you guys. Hey, that's, that's we can't true. take on any more hosts right now. I'm running out of mic space on the yeah. The too, too many device. lost puppies. No, thank you guys for showing up. Shout out to uh, Martin Polly who decided to walk in and bring that was cool. the yeah. fame and glory. So the my favorite part of Martin Polly being there, other than it just being Martin Polly, <laughs> is everybody that saw that Martin Polly was there started telling him where their favorite Eggs Benedict was. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I didn't catch that. Yeah, that's I didn't funny. hear that. That's so good. Turns out there's airplanes at this air show. Who would have thought? Bill would have thought. What is that? An airplane. It's, it's a, a spruce beach. goose. Spruce I think. goose, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's staying That's in. It's not a B-25, is it? No. Is that? It's a, that... a B-20 spruce. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So Martin Polly leads us in nicely into our next event that we partook in, um, the YouTuber meet and greet. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was really cool. And uh, so that's run by Dan Milliken and Christy Wong from Taking Off. And they did something this year they hadn't done in the past, which was actually let some of the smaller YouTubers yeah. put their channel name on a note card. They read them all off, had everybody raise their hands. And uh, so special thanks to them because when they read off the Badger Pilot, 
he actually had a fairly excited tone of, oh, the Badger pilot's here. So that was really cool. And yeah. um, so it was nice to have people not only come up to me, but um, come up to all of us. And because a lot of people that know the Badger pilot know the Flying Midwest podcast. Right. So that, cool that gave us, yeah, yeah, gave us an opportunity to, inter- to interact with a few more of our fans, which was really cool. Well, there were a couple, too, that came up to us just as we're, I mean, we were there as fans, two of our favorite YouTubers, and just in some of the lines when people would come up and, and recognize us for the logo on our shirts and go, oh, are you from the Flying Midwest podcast? I mean, that was cool, too, to interact with some people like that mm-hmm. and just a little bit more organically than just at our meet and greet to have people walk up to us and, and say hello. I could see some people, like, wanted to say something, and that's normal. I mean, we're not famous or anything. We're just people who talk on mics and it's exciting stuff and i know all the youtubers are like that too so i think that was a kind of a cool way to do things i even was approached by a guy who didn't know the podcast didn't know us oh yes never heard of us and just strung up a conversation and now he is our listener from denver (laughs) i hope (laughs) he just started talking to me about airplanes which was cool that's kind of what this is about yes he, well, he peered at our shirts and said, he did. Flying Midwest Podcast, Jim and Madison. And I said, yep, that's us. <laughs> and I was assuming it was going to be like, I've heard your podcast before. And it was, uh, no, he was just going to talk to us about airplanes, which was awesome. Yeah, so from a fan perspective, it was really nice to talk with some of our favorite YouTubers, too, and then Brian Turner as well. Um, so that was a good time. Um, one of the interesting things to me is as we were talking with Josh Flowers and saying, hey, we're from the Flying Midwest Podcast, he knew what the Flying Midwest Podcast was. So for me, that was kind of a nerd out <laughs> moment that Josh Flowers from Aviation 101 knows that we exist. So, yeah. And um, hoping that maybe the business card I gave him will um, bear fruit and create a podcast in the future. I mean, he suggested it, he did. which was kind of awesome. So I feel like that is, oh, you make a podcast? We should do that sometime. We should do a podcast. But also, he seems like a pretty decent dude. So No, so it was a lot of fun. And... Um, I know that your dad is out here, Maddie, doing some crew support stuff for us. But uh, my dad drove up, drove up. My dad drove up from Milwaukee today. I got to spend some time with him and uh, his wife Deb this afternoon. So that was a good time too to to chat with them and have them kind of see us in our element. But also, uh, they got to enjoy the air show. We really see where Jim gets his character from. Is his dad also the known, known as the creator of the Flying Monkey podcast? Oh, that's right. He, <laughs> He was really upset that we didn't stick with it. Yeah, that's not going to stick. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> he does still call it that, though, the Flying Monkey Podcast. So That's understandable. All right, so while we're doing all of that stuff... Um, so, Jim, yeah. Bill, sounds like you're having an excellent adventure. We are, and this brings us into a mini-sode within a mini-sode called Bill and Jim's Excellent Air Adventure, um, where I'm going to ask Bill some questions about what it's like from behind his lens of an air show of this size. Thanks for having me, Jim. It's good to be here on the Flying Midwest podcast. It's been fun to (laughs) tag along with you folks this afternoon. And, uh, yeah, while you guys were doing some YouTube networking, I went to the air show, uh, which I was surprised to find here at the Oshkosh Air Show. (laughs) It was very cool. So we talked on our preview episode. I mean, you love to do photography. Um, You're really interested in aviation as a whole. And you were able to kind of marry those two concepts up today. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. It um, first time experience. I've never been to an air show before. I have seen, you know, planes uh, sitting on the sitting on the tarmac type shows. I've never been to one like this where they're putting them in the air and they're pushing them to the limits of what they can do. And uh, I think the word that I said uh, a number of times while watching these uh, aircraft, I can't repeat on your podcast, but it was pretty cool. Is and it? Like I said, just seeing these machines pushed literally to the um, the edges of their performance envelope was really cool. And uh, I, I think one of the coolest parts was watching that P-51 fly with the F-16. Yeah. Those uh, heritage flights are cool. Yeah. And not only the symbolism of what it means to have 70-plus years of air superiority uh, represented by those two aircraft, but to um, just put the camera down and watch it and take yeah. it in. Um, I had to remind myself a few times to do that because any photographer will tell you, you don't want to miss an opportunity to get an interesting dynamic photo. But I had to put the camera down a few times and just take it in because you see a lot through the lens, but you don't really experience it until you put your camera down and just watch. And uh, yeah, it was incredible. And uh, 
I, I don't obviously know much about the pilots in these aircraft, but these women and men truly, uh, they have some guts, let me tell you. I, I watched them, a few of them point those planes straight up into the air until they <laughs> stalled. Very alarming to a guy who has not been to an air show before. Right, right. Uh, worked out fine. They did a nice job, and I guess it was intentional. But uh, It was. It was really part cool. Part of the show. <laughs> yeah, part of the show, thanks. I'm, uh, I'm the guy looking around shocked that something terrible was going to happen, and then everyone's <laughs> like, nah, it's part of the show. Like, so, no, it's totally cool. Yeah, they're, they're trying to do that. Um, so I, I think uh, in, in seeing, um, you really can't appreciate uh, these aircraft until you see them up close and personal. Seeing, uh, excuse me, seeing like the, that F-16 came came low and real fast, and, and yes, I don't know how did. high that, that uh, I don't know how high that F-16 was, but it looked like about 30 feet to me, and uh, boy, it was cool to see that thing scooting. So yeah, it just came screaming by. It was awesome. It was. Any other fun adventures you had today? I, I know you got around and did a lot of photography as well, not just enjoying the air show. So, anything stand out as like just uh, a highlight for you today? Yeah, you know, obviously for me it was just being surrounded by what this place is. I've never been here, frankly, only heard of it through Jim. Um, but it's uh, it's got to be a massive show. Uh, I have not, of course, been to one, but this is huge. Yeah, and. Just being able to walk up and and look at not 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 necessarily the aircraft we're seeing uh, performing, but some of the commercially available aircraft. Uh, I don't even know where to start with how cool it is to to see those up close and personal and 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 talk with the folks that talk about what those planes can do and and how they're. You know, you talked a little bit about um, Cirrus and what they're doing. Yeah. Um, seeing that was probably one of the highlights as far as vendors go because they really let you get up close and personal with those aircraft. And uh, um, I, took, uh, I took a number of photos, especially of the 10,000th. The uh, I forget the model that was. Uh, oh, that's the uh, Cirrus, the SR. The SR, yeah. Boy, beautiful airplane. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, uh, I don't know much about uh, some of these companies, but, man, that was cool. The, just the whole vibe there was fun. So um, it was a good time. Yeah. Well, glad you're having a good time. Um, we're going to continue to do this little mini-sode um, within a mini-sode of Bill and Jim's Excellent Air Venture. So thanks for playing along with that, Bill. We really appreciate that. Sure. Well, Bill, we're glad we're, you're enjoying it. It's awesome. I will say, though, I did find the Chick-fil-A. Um, <laughs> the chicken yeah, strips true. were acquired. They were excellent. <laughs> were they strips or do you get the nuggets? Um, actually, they were the nuggets. I didn't see the strips on the menu, but okay. I think this is uh, this is uh, prioritized for high-speed operation. Okay, like a scaled-down menu then. Yeah, so you really couldn't get what you normally get, but when you're out here on the front lines in Oshkosh, you got to take what you can get. <laughs> and, uh, Can't so be picky. I do expect uh, on the way back to our campsite tonight that we'll stop somewhere that's got premium chicken tenders. But Yeah, uh, premium chicken tenders on the way to our campsite, which is definitely not a hotel. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> My father and I will probably be reheating burgers that are already cooked because we planned. Thank God. Well done. But food will happen to us. It just will not be in the form of chicken strips. Well, that's unfortunate for you, but um, all the best with your burgers. Thank you so much. So we have another busy day again tomorrow. The weather is supposed to be a little dreary. So what do we got going on tomorrow, Maddie? Dreary, dreary, wet and weary. However, it is time for the interviews on the Flying Windows podcast. So tomorrow we have a really full day as you... As <laughs> so, I I don't know. We're gonna find out when we listen to this later. Really I'll tell you what. If it, didn't, if it didn't pick up on the mic, it'll pick up on this. Okay, yeah. <laughs> all right. So we've got the route to Applebee's all squared away. You guys are set. At one point eight miles to Applebee's. Got it. Okay. Oh, good grief. So we will be doing a lot of interviews tomorrow because taking advantage of the poor weather. We'll have on the docket so far Ryan Dabrowski, the Wisconsin Aviation Hall of Fame, and we will be talking with them about the Leo Cohn collection, the, fo- the photos that we talked about a couple episodes ago, and much more. We have a lot of vendors that we've spoken to, a lot of companies that, and individuals that we are going to be talking to, so stay tuned. And, well, that and plus the regular press conferences that we have that EAA Media has scheduled, so we'll check some of those out and see what's new and hip within the aviation community that we can share with all of you in future episodes. 
Yeah, I just want to say you guys are referring to the weather tomorrow as dreary. I don't know if you've been to Oshkosh when there's weather forecast. <laughs> there's nothing dreary <laughs> about it. <laughs> um, yeah, the forecast I'm seeing is a chance of scattered storms, which means probably tornadoes. But <laughs> that's just yeah, how that's it goes here. That's usually how it works. But hey, if the night show happens on Wednesday, it will that's be a feat. It doesn't usually happen. It's usually the, the Thursday. The Wednesday right. air show on Thursday. Yeah. Yes, that's it true. It happens more often than not. So yep. we we shall see. Uh, Badger, you're also doing some, um, I don't want to call it investigative reporting, um, like more man-on-the-street reporting through Camp Scholar. Is that right? Is that your plan for tomorrow? In yeah, part? it's more like just mindless wandering and finding random people to put a microphone in front of. And <laughs> That's what man-on-the-street uh, is. Have you not seen those on, like, the, the late-night shows? I, I Sure. Okay. I can't even think of it. It's a very, very simple man in the camp concept. Yeah. You go around with microphone and talk to people. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm going to do. And I don't know if it's going to be like, what do you enjoy about camping in Scholar? What do you enjoy about Oshkosh? It could be just however the mood strikes. But what's your favorite Midwest or regional themed podcast? Yeah, exactly. Why does your truck have so many stickers on it? Please tell me about them. (laughs) Uh, But either way, we're uh, we're a podcast for the people. So we're going to go out and be with the people. I love it. Excellent. Excited to see what happens tomorrow. Speaking of Wednesday night, we do have one more meet and greet planned. Wednesday at 5 p.m. in front of the Red Barn over by the... Vintage? Yeah, I was going to say antiques, but vintage sounds a lot more correct. That's the actual formal term, I think, is vintage. A lot gooder. A lot gooder. Yes. Uh, 5 o'clock Wednesday night in front of the Vintage Red Barn. Uh, we'll hang out with some more listeners, get a chance to meet us, see our lovely faces behind the mics. And um, shortly after that is when the snowbirds are expected to land. So we'll oh, all hang right. out and watch that yeah. afterwards. Got to see that. Be there, be square. The see green you. square. At or be on the yellow square. Clear to the end. Yellow uh, square. I think we're done. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on this first AirVenture 24 mini episode touch and go information alpha yeah that's right and tomorrow will be information bravo correct live from air venture we will come back to you tomorrow with information bravo and until next time see ya see ya see ya